Thank you, Magnus, for the support that we receive from UNESCO. I think it's very important. It's very important that we can count with these agencies if we can get the other one. Thank you. So while the presentation is being low, that we're getting to, to, to an end of today. Today has been a very intense day. We anticipated that, that would be a, a very intense day. And uh, we call it this meeting, the, the kickoff meeting of this uh, association, Associations for Responsible Research and Innovation in Genome Editing. And you might think that this is a phenomenal task. And actually, you're right. This is, <laughs> this is a phenomenal task. This is already a lot of work ahead of us. But uh, at least a number of us we've been discussing over the past two years, and we've been accepting this challenge because we see a number of different initiatives being promoted across uh, the world but um, beyond the reports, beyond declaring the interest, not much is really happening. We just heard very clearly why we have to do what we're doing. We just heard from the patient's voice. We just heard that when we're discussing about uh, our certainties, we're discussing about the pattern scenario, when we're discussing about uh, the technicalities. At the end of the road, there is, uh, there is a patient. There is a patient that uh, might be waiting that uh, we just sort of come across a potential solution. And I think this is something that we should not, uh, we should not forget. Let me uh, show you a couple of slides. I did not prepare many slides. And actually, uh, I was, the slides I prepared, they very much reiterate what Hervé very nicely said before, so, and I think you will get this message twice, which I, think, which I think is good because I think this is the main message that we, from the, from the steering committee, we would like to, to, to combine. Of course, we started with Francis Mojica, who told us about this, uh, uh, these uh, proteins <coughs> and these systems that basically cut foreign DNA intrude the DNA, and that was a wonderful system that prokaryotes, they, devel they developed to fight their viruses and other intruder DNA elements. And of course, we heard that uh, later on, much later on, many years later, this uh, immune system was converted into a genome editing application because now this uh, double strand break in the DNA can be resolved by the repairing mechanism in different ways, as we heard, with the corresponding delimitations. But uh, the end of the road as well is that either we can create these mutations or we can edit this uh, genome. And by editing the genome, it means not only that we can reproduce mutations that we found in our patients in both cells and animal models or even plant organisms, but also we can do even things more interesting, which is even correct and fix the mutations that we come across in patients and in other, and in other organisms. So let me uh, just take a few words that I don't think we have said that clearly enough. And, uh, uh, and I, wanna, I wanna be very clear. I wanna be absolutely uh, express my appreciation to INSERM because we hear because INSERM took the lead in Europe, and Francois Hirich and Herbeck Nivais, they took the list, and the rest of colleagues, Jennifer Merchan and Mariano Becasis, and all the ones that are listed in the steering committee belonging to the INSERN, they took this initiative, and they started with a meeting here in Paris almost two years ago, March 2016, and they also involved other uh, stakeholders that they normally refer to, but uh, rarely are present. So we're not even talking about the Global South. We have the Global South in the room, and that's the difference. So we have people from Africa, we have people from Gabon, from Congo, from uh, Mali. We have people from Asia, from Singapore, from Saudi Arabia, from India, from Turkey, from uh, uh, other countries. We have people from Latin America and Central America, from Mexico, Guatemala, Argentina, and perhaps I'm just forgetting others. So we, from the very beginning, this group, 
just uh, got one of uh, the mandates he, they wanted to have is to have already all these different voices. Because I reiterate what I said at the very beginning this morning, that we're living in a complex world. I just provided an example how <coughs> the same concept was playing different roles in different languages. Genome editing, as I said, genome editing is great in English. Genome editing is not, is not so great in Spanish. I mean, that's why we use uh, genetic editing. This is what uh, it's common to us. So we need to be, uh, to, we need to, to adopt and we need to adapt to the different, the, uh, different uh, situations, different cultures, different countries, different attitudes. And this is uh, complex. And this is why I think this is still even more phenomenal and more complex tax, but still we want to accept the challenge. So as you know, we eventually came across these publications. It took us a while to get this white paper so it took us, I think, more than one year to get this paper. So some of these rep reports, you might think that they are easier to get published. I mean, it was not our experience. And I, I think it was, a, it was a fairly decent, a fairly informative uh, document. But nonetheless, it took us a while. But eventually, that got published. And eventually, we decided to uh, gather just before Christmas in, in November. So that's the paper that you can get in directly into 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 the uh, into the Arrige uh, website and basically what we were planning and that's the take home message from that paper which I think is still true what at the beginning we thought about the European Steering Committee which now it's converted into a more international truly international uh, committee is to foster research that will assess the feasibility the efficacy and the safety of genome editing techniques to evaluate the potential adverse effects on gene drive. So gene drive was already there. We had discussions about gene drive. We had already a good paragraph describing what is expected to come from gene drive and what are the limitations and what are the uh, dangerous uh, or the problems associated with uh, all these uh, techniques. To reassess the ban on all modifications of the germline nuclear genome for clinical application in human reproductions, actually to be aware about these uncertainties that we discussed before. This uh, we can. It's not only about the off targets. It's about how the repairing machinery is creating this variety of different genetic alleles, among which. We hope to find the one that is fixing the mutation, but we have to deal with many others that uh, probably are creating more trouble than benefit. So we need, to, we need to assess and we need to value how much of this uh, additional genetic noise are we able to accept before we, we, we progress into these applications. To be proactive, to prevent this technology from being hijacked, this is as Herbert was saying very clearly before, we have to reiterate, I mean, we should avoid that uh, these extremist views and avoid also misleading public expectation with overinflated promises because also we have also the public opinion, we have the public society, we have this patient's organization. We need to be very clear and very frank. This, uh, Milan said this morning, we need to accept, the, we need to, to take it very humble about the ignorance we think we know some, um, a lot of things. Actually, we know just a bit. We just know a bit of the surface. Francis Mojica this morning told us about if you think that CRISPR systems are complex and I'll just wait for the 10 additional systems yet to be discovered and yet to be identified. So it is a lot still that we don't know. And we need to be clear. We need to be frank with the public opinion and with all the different stakeholders that we still don't have the truth for, for, for everything. And basically also to raise awareness about the distinction between care and treatment of human disease versus human enhancement. So this is also something that it did not appear clearly in today's discussion, but was touched in this November meeting we had just before Christmas. So this is exactly what we had in, in, before Christmas in uh, 13 of November here in Paris at the INSERM uh, building. So this is just five of the points that we basically came across. We need to be thinking ahead when enacting new legislation, anticipating rather than reacting. I mean, 
I mean, uh, creating and suggesting new legislations following the different scientific advances doesn't seem to be a very uh, promise, a very recommended path. So we need to think ahead. We need to reuse what are the existing laws and think whether we can slightly modify it to become more coherent to, with the scientific knowledge. We need to foster this so-called and very difficult governance risk management approach and taking into account all these many uncertainties that are already. We need to have this inclusive debate on what is acceptable and what is desirable. And we need to involve the civil society. We need to be transparent. Openness, I, we cannot stress enough about the relevance, about openness, about transparent, about, about sharing what we know and sharing what we still don't know. And we need to deal with this race towards the market of some of these applications, which has heard from Beatrice a very nice summary about these patent fights. And uh, we have to take into account that uh, the simplicity and the accessibility of the systems and many of these systems make it possible for someone to prepare uh, some of these uh, apparently applications in their garage. And this is this do-it-yourself applications. So here we are. Here we are today in Paris, and um, also Eva, this morning, uh, she was uh, reporting and she was also, again, summarizing uh, very nicely that there are many reports and documents dealing with the ethics issues and the responsible use of genome editing techniques. And I think if you read all these different uh, reports, and if you hear all what you, has been presented to you, thanks to the variety of speakers we had from different countries, from different perspectives, I think you would agree with me, you would agree with us that it's time to join efforts. It's time to team up. It's time to not only scientists, but also research institutions, ethicists, regulators, representatives of the different economic sectors that are impacted by these techniques but also the general public and the passing associations and NGO. We need to come together. I mean, there is, it, it, there is no way that we can uh, work on this very phenomenal task uh, uh, the, in different paths without uh, setting up a collaborated uh, agreement. And this is why we decided to put forward this uh, a very challenging idea of creating a rich, this association for responsible research and innovation and genome editing. And this, uh, with this uh, aim, this initial goal, to promote a uh, pretended global governance of uh, genome editing techniques. How we can progress into this direction? Well, Herbe was presenting different uh, scenarios. I just reduced these uh, scenarios to two. So either, I think we have two options. And th I think we have to be very clear. And I, I think everyone here in this room and those that will follow on these uh, different slides, by the way, with the collaboration and acceptance of all speakers, we will make available all these different slides to all of you. So we can have, we can maintain a discussion group, like a think tank, basically, as we are progressing right now. We have a discussion email list. We don't need to have a structure. It is a self-declared, self-organized group. That's the easier, but also, let's be clear, that's probably the less effective. Or we can create a non-for-profit association, which means we need to have, or we will be coming, we will be legally represented, we will have a legal status, we will have to define clearly goals, objectives, and the activities to reach these objectives. We will also, it means to commit and to be co-responsible, and then we will have to register somewhere, such as in France, for instance, we have to register, this is one of the proposals. We will have to have bylaws that will be uh, govern this uh, structure. We will have to elect a board and executive delegates. This will be liable, and then we will be co-responsible. There will be some structure for membership fees. There will be some assets sooner or later. There will be committees, there will be an internal structure and different areas and et cetera. So I want to be very clear on this. This is a lot of work, but at the same time, that's probably a lot more effective. So with these two situations in hand and without any further commitment, I would like to just sense your opinion. And those that are 
from what you heard all over the, these days and what you heard today in the meeting, what you've read in the discussion list, what you've read from the uh, web page. Who is at the moment, or who do you think you are at the moment for the creation of the association? Please raise your hands. Okay, that's a good number. That's promising. That's promising. And that's exactly what we wanted uh, to see. Of course, not every one of you. We don't expect everyone to be accepting this, but uh, we will be progressing according to majority rules as the way to progress. And it, it looks to me that uh, I've counted more people with uh, hands raised than uh, people that didn't raise their hands. So I take it as a mandate that uh, we need to create this association. So my dear friends from the Inserm Ethics Committee, there is some work to be done, so we need to progress, and uh, we will be progressing in the uh, next uh, weeks and months during which we will be discussing all these different details. So there is a lot of questions that uh, they need to be addressed, and I don't want to go again regarding what and how and whom should be steered regarding the creating of these different toolboxes. Toolboxes, as I explained to my colleague that was expressing some doubts, toolboxes, we refer to toolboxes in the sense of procedures, in the sense of guidelines, in the sense of guidances. So a protocol that can be applied in order to solve any question, not only an experiment, but also how to assess a given experiment involving uh, genome editing. So this is the, the different questions that we will have to address, and definitely we have already some uh, areas that have been identified because we had these different discussions promoted by different facilitators over this afternoon. So what, uh, what we would like now is that you just uh, pay attention to these different groups and maybe you would like to propose or to, just to suggest the additions or the creation of additional groups and think about where do you think you can better contribute to the success of this initiative. And please join in and please register. And for progressing into this matter, we have made it very simple. So there is a domain where we have a very simple web uh, site with contents and with the help and with the help and collaboration of uh, several colleagues uh, we will be um, producing a better web page with uh, more contents and all these different materials that we have been using over these different months and in these different meetings they will be available through this, so full transparency from the very, from the very beginning, so it's very easy to remember, arish.org, so this is a non-for-profit organization, and if, as you know, there is a, already a list that is going on that is provided by my institute, and eventually this list will be moved into the proper domain, but at the moment this list is being run from my institute, and if you are not part of this list and you would like to be part and you would like to progress and contribute to the forthcoming discussions, that's very simple. You just have to send an email to this address, join at arich.org. That's about what I wanted to say. So and now I would like to hear maybe a few comments or maybe Hervé wants to say something or Francois. So thank you all for all for staying with us until the very end of this very intense meeting. And we look forward to the creation and the official uh, foundation of this association. Thank you. So we, we just move from uh, announcement to practice. Uh, because for the next uh, working groups, we need people that are involved. So according, uh, I, I took uh, along the day some, some notes, and uh, so we have to fulfill the goals that were uh, presented along the day. So one thing is that we are going to need 
uh, around Marion, I think, some jurist to create this association. If you feel some uh, uh, interest in uh, doing this association or helping Louis uh, for the website, I've heard from uh, Mestin Sans Frontières that you have some expertise. Cyril has also some expertise. We will need to create some virtual workspace within the website to allow the working group to, to work. So we will implement uh, in these multidisciplinary groups uh, the clearing house uh, and at some times uh, to do some meeting. But clearly we have to, to have people that decide to be involved, for example, impact on environment and the difference between wild animal, gene drive, uh, Philippa uh, or uh, you were saying that uh, some were more valued than that others. I should say that as a researcher and as the head of a research center, the uh, transgenic animals uh, are much more valued because if we lost them, we lose our tool. Uh, we, we lose our working tool. So we cherish our uh, mice. And uh, I often, as I am also an MD uh, working in the hospital, I often say that our mice in the lab are well more correctly treated than some of our patients in the hospitals. And when you see the emergency rooms at certain hours with the, the time the people are spending in the corridors uh, on uh, chariots, it's incredible the way human beings are treated, in, even if human beings are also animals. So uh, we will need people that want to work on this topic, including uh, microbiome, this, was, uh, this is an ID uh, uh, supported by uh, Patrice Debré, who always remember us that uh, our genome, what we think about our genome, is only at most 10% of our genome, because 90% of our genome is our microbiome. Uh, what we have on our skin, what we have on our lung, in our lungs, what we have in our um, uh, intestines. So uh, clearly, what is uh, our genome? And obviously, uh, we, we didn't let uh, um, uh, some of our colleagues uh, speaking about the livestock, but livestock animals is, is a, a huge uh, story. And I think Nuffield had already um, uh, uh, report uh, on livestock. Uh, it's uh, not only only about meat. Uh, it's uh, not only about using pigs for xenograft. It's also about the way we see animals. Uh, uh, you you can imagine this muscle wheel wheels or this muscle co. Uh, how do you see them? How are they feeling some pains or things like that? We have plenty of works. So you have to think: Do you want to be part of this? working groups uh, or other working groups. The next thing is uh, that we spoke about a permanent forum. So a permanent forum need to uh, respond to the questions such as tracking conceptual development or looking to frontiers. We already have a proposal from Ceres in Cologne, uh, the center head by uh, Christian Wuppen, to work on these frontiers between research and care, uh, which have been uh, appointed. We need also, uh, if we want to be involved in governance, and I have heard that UNESCO would be uh, okay to help us in this way, maybe welcoming some meetings, maybe working on some conventions. Um, uh, we need to work on what kind of conventions, what should be our anti-doping, uh, we need to work on, uh, uh, for example, this idea of registry. Are we going to create gtrial.gov, which is uh, just the mimic of clinicaltrial.gov? Uh, it could be a registry. For example, it has been mentioned the gene drive experiment, uh, the proposal of Thomas Esvelt, but it could be more than just gene drive. It could be a registry, but this needs to be created and this be uh, to exist. And finally, we have seen that the intellectual property uh, is something uh, very difficult to manage at this point. And uh, with uh, the people of OECD, we already in Berlin discussed about 
uh, making um, uh, um, the patent on uh, CRISPR uh, as platforms, even not only pools, but platforms, and maybe licensing or patenting only some application, but not the hardcore of, uh, of the platform. We need, we need specific people to address these questions. Uh, and finally, uh, Luis already spoke of toolbox. What we imagine uh, behind toolbox, uh, Pete uh, proposed these uh, divisions, and we need to implement uh, this with more about medical, public, global ethic, uh, including some aspect of security and do it yourself. And finally, uh, we have spoken of the the general public, and we are the general public as soon as we are not in our specific field of expertise. So how to make education? But uh, the public knows already a lot. Uh, we have so many experts today uh, in, the, in what we name the public that we, we could take great care of what we name education, what we name engagement, what we mean by empowerment, and how we move from the general idea to the individual, how we do that at the local level, uh, meaning translating all that in the various languages of the public we want to uh, target. Um, well, a splendid work ahead, but now we need people that, won't, that uh, should be group leaders, uh, people that are going to gather around them uh, these wor virtual working groups and that are going to produce because uh, there is no way that these uh, items or these titles are going to remain just words or just titles. So we need you to be active and as soon as now to make proposals on the website to be the coordinator or facilitator, name it the way you want, of one or the other of this group, and for the other one at least to participate in this group. So now, uh, not only the floor is yours, uh, we are going to listen to your, to your comments, but also the work is yours, and we have so much to do. Thank you.